Mr. Chairman, Your Excellency, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Icebreakers 2022 Chinese New Year online celebration. 各位来宾,女士们,先生们,欢迎各位参加破冰者2022年新春庆祝活动. Over the past half century, Icebreakers Chinese New Year celebration has always reunited us at this special time of the year. And this year, is the year of tiger, symbolizing we forge ahead with the vigor and vitality of the tiger. Are you ready for a roaring 2022? And now, please allow me to outline the agenda of today's event. After we welcome, after the welcome speech by Mr. Feng Wenjian, Chairman of CCC UK, General Manager of Bank of China London branch, we will have the opportunity to listen to the keynote speeches by high profile speakers. They are His Excellency Zheng Zeguang, Ambassador of the People's Republic of China to the United Kingdom. Sir Sherrod Cooper Coase, Chair of China Britain Business Council, Group Head of Public Affairs, HSBC Holdings PLC. The Right Honorable Lord Hammond of Renimede, former Chancellor of the Exchequer. John Edwards, Her Majesty's Trade Commissioner, British Embassy, Beijing. And Stephen Perry, Chairman of the 48 Group Club. And later, we will also be entertained by demonstration and performances which reflect the synergy between China and the West. With no more delay, it is my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Feng Wenjian, Chairman of China Chamber of Commerce in the UK, General Manager of Bank of China London Branch to address us the welcome speech, please. Thank you, Xiaolang. Your Excellency Ambassador Zhen, Commissioner Edwards, Chairman Perry, Sir Sherrod, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and good evening. Welcome to the Icebreakers 2022 Chinese New Year online celebration co-hosted by the 48th Group Club, the China Britain Business Council, and the China Chamber of the Commerce in the UK. Today, we are gathering at this time-honored event in the China-UK calendar to welcome the arrival of an extremely auspicious year, the year of the tiger. In China, tiger signifies strength, courage, determination, and confidence, and is renowned as the king of all animals. Our British friends may argue over whether it should be the tiger or the lion that wears this crown. Indeed, the British you know, do refer to the lion as the king of the jungle. However, please allow me to share with you one fact to end this debate, that Her Majesty the Queen was actually born in the year of the tiger. So the lions here also need to follow the order of the tiger. However, was the tiger born to be so strong and powerful? The answer is absolutely not. According to a Chinese ancient story, the tiger was nobody at the very beginning and was often teased by other animals. It heard there was a hidden master in the forest, the black cat, who was very good at hunting. So the tiger went to learn from the cat. Day by day, it learned all the skills of the cat and the tiger rose to become the king. This inspirational story of the tiger tells us that the great achievement and strong performance does not just happen in a day. The path from small to big, from weak to strong is long and hard. And it is important that people in the world should learn from each other. It is the same with the flourishing China-UK economic and cultural relations that we are celebrating today. From the first icebreakers to open the door to trade links in 1950s, to the trading goods between our two nations now exceeding 100 billion US dollars for the first time. We have witnessed concerted efforts from all walks of life in our two countries, generation after generation. Nowadays, as we face new challenges and obstacles, it is more important that we should be open-minded and accommodating. We should learn the merits and strength from each other. Ladies and gentlemen, when we embrace the ear of the tiger, it reminds me of a quote from the Nobel Prize winner for literature, Wole Soyinka. A tiger does not shout its tigritude, it acts. 
Now it is time for us to take swift actions to meet our challenges and to unlock a new and shared future for all. But first, let's be open to wisdom and guidance. Now it is my great honor to welcome His Excellency Chen Zeguang, the Chinese Ambassador to the United Kingdom, to deliver an address. Ambassador Chen, please. Mr. Perry, Sir Sherrod, Mr. Fang, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a real delight to join you at the Icebreakers 2022 Chinese New Year celebration. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the 48 Group Club, the China Chamber of Commerce in the UK, and the China Britain Business Council for the kind invitation. President Xi Jinping sent a special message of congratulations to today's celebration. So first of all, I have the great honor to read out the English translation of President Xi's message. And the text is as follows. Mr. Perry, I would like to express my warmest congratulations on the Icebreakers 2022 Chinese New Year celebration in London, hosted by the 48 Group Club in partnership with the China Britain Business Council and the China Chamber of Commerce in the UK. In the 1950s, British entrepreneurs represented by Mr. Jack Perry embarked on a journey to break the ice of Western trade embargo on China. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the ambassadorial diplomatic relations between China and the UK. Looking back, we cannot help remembering the old generation of friends who have made historic contribution to the development of the China-UK relationship. Looking ahead, I hope the visionary people from both our two countries, including the business community, will carry forward the ice-breaking spirit and expand mutually beneficial cooperation to give the China-UK friendship a new dimension, defecting our times and bring more benefits to both our two countries and peoples. As the Chinese New Year of the Tiger approaches, I hope all of you will achieve great success like tiger with attic wings and wish you and your family a happy and safe New Year. Xi Jinping, President, the People's Republic of China, Beijing, the 26th January, 2022. End of the text. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this message of congratulations represents the great importance that President Xi Jinping attaches to the China-UK relationship and conveys his expectations to the visionary people from both our two countries, including the business community. It has charted the course for us to make joint efforts to advance China-UK ties and expand our mutually beneficial cooperation. It is my hope that the visionary people from both our two countries, including the business communities, will actively respond to the call of President Xi Jinping and strive for new progress in China-UK cooperation. 
We should be brave like the tiger, fear no obstacles, and stay confident in cooperation. Now, the past 50 years has made it very clear to us that China-UK cooperation served the fundamental interests of both countries and the world. 50 years later, today, we should not allow anyone to turn back the wheel of history and deny the common aspirations of our two peoples. We should redouble our efforts to move ahead. So let's stay the course and charge forward. We should be bold like the tiger, blaze new trail and share in the opportunities of China's development. China's GDP has exceeded 110 trillion RMB yuan. And the annual increment is about the size of the sixth biggest economy of the world. With the policies of high quality, balanced, low carbon and green development further implemented, the Chinese market opened up at a higher level. There will be certainly uh, more opportunities for cooperation between China and other countries, including the UK. So China represents the biggest potential growth market for the UK goods and services for a long time to come. And this historical opportunity must not be lost. We should be also strong like the tiger and strive for win-win outcomes together. China and the UK enjoy high economic and industrial complementarity. It is important that the business communities of China and the UK join hands and leverage our respective strengths, consolidate the cooperation in traditional areas, including trade, investment, traditional finance, manufacturing and infrastructure, like expand into new areas such as healthcare, fintech, green energy, digital economy, and creative industries. And also explore the third markets. In this way, we can create more highlights of cooperation and bring more benefits to the peoples of our two countries and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chinese New Year of the Tiger is drawing near. It will be followed this time by the opening of the Beijing Winter Olympics. I'm sure you will join me in wishing our friends from all sectors and their families a healthy, happy, and prosperous new year. Let's also wish the athletes from China, the United Kingdom, and all other countries success at the Winter Olympic Games. Once again, happy Chinese New Year to you all. Thank you. Ambassador Zhang, Lord Hammond, John Edwards, ladies and gentlemen. This is the uh, 45th Chinese New Year celebration the icebreakers have organized. We have had many important people speak and address us. This is the first time the President of China has sent a message. It is very special as he represents the people of China. And this event is about Chinese history and different nationalities coming together to celebrate a very important event in the world's calendar, the Chinese New Year. Representatives of all walks of life join the business community today in starting the celebrations for Chinese New Year. The presence of the president here today is very important for our Chinese friends because it is their year and their president. We're delighted to bring him to our celebration. Sure, he's very busy with COVID and the Winter Olympics, so we thank him very much for finding the time to join us with this lovely and warm message, which we reciprocate entirely. The icebreakers have been working on developing the bilateral relationship for 70 years, and this is a wonderful recognition of our work. Thank you very much indeed, President Xi Jinping. And perhaps you will all join me in sending our thanks to him in the traditional way of applause. Thank you.
Thank you, Stephen. And here, just to kindly remind you that today our event has spontaneous interpretation available. So if you want to listen to the keynote speeches in Mandarin, you can find the button on the screen. So now let's welcome Sir Sherrod Cooper Cove, Chair of China Britain Business Council, Group Head of Public Affairs, HSBC Holdings, please. Ni hao, Lang Shao. Your Excellency, my friend Ambassador Zhang, our friend Ambassador Zhang, my friends, the two chairmen, uh, Chairman Perry and Chairman Fang, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all and thank you again for joining us in today's celebration of the coming Year of the Tiger. We welcome the wise words in President Xi Jinping's letter and share his hope that working together, we can and we must build a better world for everyone on this planet of ours. And we thank President Xi for his good wishes for the new year. Now across the United Kingdom, Yingguo, there are Chinese communities adding to the wealth and diversity of this country. We welcome their presence. We welcome the part that they play in our national life. The Chinese students, Chinese artists, Chinese entrepreneurs, Chinese business leaders, and in better times, Chinese tourists who develop a strong affinity to build the bonds between Zhongguo and Yingguo. They continue to make an extraordinary contribution to our national life and one that we must celebrate together today. China and the United Kingdom can achieve so much together, not only in the boardrooms which I as chair of the China-Britain Business Council, but also in the factories and offices, the laboratories and lecture halls across the four nations of our United Kingdom. And, of course, so often we work together in third countries around the world. Now, it is said in relation to the lunar calendar, and the year of the tiger is once the tiger arrives, the wealth arrives. And of course, as business people, we hope that that comes true. But our work together is about more than wealth. It's about cooperation and friendship and developing uh, all the bonds, economic, commercial, cultural, which tie our two countries together. Now, probably only Mr. Perry and possibly Lord Hammond are old enough to remember that in the 1960s, when one drove into a filling station belonging to a certain oil company, we were urged by that company to put a tiger in our tank. I remember my brothers and I saying to my late father, Daddy, let's put a tiger in our tank. I won't name the oil company, but I will say to you, Ambassador Zhang, to all of us in this call today, let's put a tiger in our tank as we fill up with energy and friendship for the year ahead. And one of the things we're going to do and this is thanks to the work of Ambassador Zhang and his embassy, is renew the meetings between our two countries, uh, the Economic and Trade uh, Commission, the Economic Commission, the Trade Commission. And that is thanks to the work of Ambassador Zhang. And so it gives me great pleasure that our next speaker was the architect of the last such meeting the Economic and Financial Dialogue of 2019. Philip Hammond 
Lord Hammond of Runnymede, has been a powerful advocate for the kind of win-win relationship between our two countries that all of us favor and which each of us sees as essential to our future shared prosperity. In a distinguished career as a member of parliament, Lord Hammond served almost uniquely in four cabinet jobs as Chancellor of the Exchequer, as Foreign Secretary, and as Secretary of State successively for Transport and Defence. Lord Hammond, thank you so much for speaking to us today. Good morning. It's a pleasure to join you this morning in this celebration of the Chinese New Year, ushering in the Year of the Tiger. Hopefully, the last year in which we we're unable to meet in person for a more traditional celebration. The last two years of pandemic have been a challenging period for the global economy and especially for international trade, with volume shrinking, shipping disrupted, and supply demand imbalances in critical components and materials. And a challenging period too for UK-China relations. But the facts remain the facts. China is the world's second largest economy, the UK's sixth largest export market, and its single largest source of imports. The UK and China, despite differences, share a commitment to free trade and share too a dependency on safe, secure international trade routes. And while trade in both directions has been negatively affected by the pandemic, forecast economic growth for both countries in 2021 and into 2022 suggests a strong recovery from the lows of 2020. The UK remains a destination of choice for Chinese businesses investing in Europe, and British companies continue to seek opportunities to expand into China's rapidly growing consumer markets for everything from high-end vehicles through luxury consumer goods, food and drink, to financial services products. Our people-to-people -people links, key to long-term improvement of mutual understanding, are strong, if somewhat unbalanced, with an estimated 200,000 Chinese students in British universities immediately before the pandemic, and over 880,000 Chinese tourists visiting the UK in 2019. Because of China's size, even in years of relatively modest economic growth, huge incremental market demand is created. And as the UK feels its way to a new set of post-Brexit trade relationships across the globe, China will be an important partner. And Chinese investors can be confident that the things that have made the UK an attractive destination for Chinese investment in the past will continue to do so in the future. But it goes beyond trade. As we begin to address the challenge of decarbonizing our economies, China will be an indispensable partner in the battle against global warming, both as a contributor to decarbonization in its own economy, with the world's largest installed base of renewable energy already, and as a supplier to the world of next generation technologies, delivering renewable energy infrastructure, electric vehicles, and other products to help our energy transition on its way. The UK and China, 5,000 miles apart, and with very different histories, cultures, political and economic systems. It would be all too easy to turn our backs on each other as too different, to conclude that the gap between us is too great to bridge. But that would be the wrong conclusion and a bad outcome for both countries. As we look to the future, to the year of the tiger and beyond, let us focus on what we have in common, not what divides us, on how and where we can cooperate to the mutual benefit of our people, growing prosperity, combating climate change, 
making the case for trade which is free and fair. Managing this sometimes challenging but always worthwhile relationship for the benefit of both our peoples. I wish all of you a happy and prosperous new year. Thank you, my Lord. The speech has provided us so many insightful perspectives on the economic and trade relationships between the two nations, and we hope to hear more from you in the near future. And now I'm delighted to introduce John Edwards, Her Majesty's Trade Commissioner, British Embassy from Beijing. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Lord Hammond, Sir Sherard, Chairman Fang, Chairman Perry, ladies and gentlemen, good evening from Beijing. And may I begin by wishing all of those joining us online today a happy new year. I first came to work here in the embassy in Beijing in the year of the tiger, 1998. Since then, I have witnessed the remarkable growth of the country, a growth driven by the talent, hard work and ingenuity of the Chinese people. In that quarter of a century, we have also seen the links between the UK and China broaden and deepen. The hundreds of thousands of students who have studied in each other's country, the millions of tourists who have traveled through the extraordinary history and landscape of the UK and China. As two great entrepreneurial nations, business has always been a mainstay of our relationship, and that continues to this day. For the UK government, we set this out clearly in last year's integrated review, that we are determined to deepen our trading relationship and attract more Chinese investment into the UK in ways that support UK values, national security, and our long-term economic strength. At the end of last year, we held our health and energy dialogues, and we look forward in the coming months to holding the Joint Economic and Trade Commission and the Economic and Financial Dialogue. There is much to discuss. The UK is an important market for Chinese goods. In the figures, statistics released by the Ministry of Commerce just last week, uh, 87 billion US dollars in 2021 of Chinese exports to the UK. And UK investment in China continues to grow. The largest foreign banks, energy companies, pharmaceutical firm, hotel chain, and the second largest foreign fast-moving consumer goods company in China are all British. Equally, China remains a significant market for UK goods, 25 billion US dollars last year. Against the backdrop of a global pandemic, the UK exports to China, not including volatile goods like oil and gold, grew in both 2020 and in 2021. In 2021, last year, by more than 10%. Chinese companies also recognise the transparent and predictable investment environment that the UK provides. We have particularly welcomed the contribution they are making to the UK's green transition. The billions of pounds in green bonds issued by Chinese banks in the City of London. Envision's Gigafactory in Sunderland, Huanong's battery storage facility, the largest in Europe, and the recently signed MOU with Minyang to set up an offshore wind turbine assembly plant in the UK. Now we will be working to build a case for Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers and the renewable supply chain to assemble and build across the UK to serve the most exciting green market in the world and to make a joint contribution to the defining challenge of our time climate change. So thank you again for inviting me. Thank you, Joan, and I wish you loads of luck and blessings in your work anniversary in the year of a tiger. And thank you again for your long standing support of our activities. Now, ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, I would like you to introduce our last speaker, Stephen Perry, chairman of the 48 Group Club. Welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Ambassador Zhang, uh, Lord Hammond, John Edwards, distinguished guests, lords, ladies and gentlemen, that was always the part of uh, my speech that worried me the most, whether I would get that introduction correct. I think I've done it okay today. The year of the tiger is here. And today we have had a set of fine speeches to remind us why we need the tiger just now. He is brave and courageous, and the challenges of COVID and climate control need just that determination of the tiger. 
Ambassador Jiang has made a brilliant address to us. It is more than a speech. This slot was created in our 17th celebration in 1994 to enable the Ambassador Ma Yujian to address the British and Chinese business communities and representatives of our political leaders and cultural and sports communities. It is a time for China to have its voice in the UK so we know what China is thinking. In just one year, Ambassador, you have made friends across the nation and today you have made one of the finest addresses we have heard. This is not an easy period in the bilateral relationship and you have explained China's thinking and also touched upon the importance that China gives to the relationship, as also shown by the message from the President Xi. We are both permanent members of the Security Council of the United Nations, and we have a responsibility to act together for world peace. And you have reminded that to us today. Thank you very much indeed, Ambassador Zhang. This is a rare virtual event. Next year, we hope we will be back to a normal dinner where 500 British and Chinese can meet and listen to speeches about China and the world and the UK and meet each other and network. This will give us opportunity to hear you again, Ambassador, to make an address to us. And thank you so much again for organizing the message from the president. I think you are the only ambassador in the world who has managed this. You dared to try for this and your colleagues found it a good idea, as did the president. Thank you, Ambassador. Lord Hammond, thank you for speaking to us today. I can speak for the entire audience when I say we miss you and we wish we could transport you back to the House of Commons as you have such a reputation for quiet common sense. This is a complex world and we need more quiet common sense, the way of statesmen and women, of which you are considered by millions to be a special statesman. Thank you very much indeed for coming today. George Edwards, again, thank you very much for the speech from the front line of China, where British companies work to develop their markets 24 hours a day, as Chinese companies do here in the UK. China is a highly competitive market, especially as it now focuses more and more on East Asia and Asia. And the business world thanks you for what you do to advise and promote the British interest. Please pass our best wishes to the ambassador and we hope she will join us again in the future and best wishes to all the embassy staff from all of us in London. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 45th celebration organized by the full icebreakers team, including the company which I chair, London Export Corporation and the 48 Group. But also we remember the first icebreakers in 1952 and 1953 in very tough physical conditions as they, Chinese and British, including my late father, were the risk takers to bring 25% of the world's population back into their leading position then and now. And we all wish China many more years of helping the world economy and bringing us the benefits of your innovations and civilization, such as your wonderful cuisine and Chinese medicine. Lastly, can I thank my fellow organizers of today? That is CBBC, which we helped found in 1991 to have one joint trade promotion organization from the UK. This is a joint organization founded by the British Government Trade Department and the 48 Group. We gave our China offices to CBBC. And the other partner is the China Chamber of Commerce, which we also helped to get started. Both organizations help us hold up this celebration. Thanks very much to the CCC and CBBC staff who enabled this event today to happen. Thanks to my friends, Fang Wenjian and Sir Sherrod Kalpa Coles, who are such magnificent people to help enable today's event. They have been truly valiant. We all wish that the world settles soon and we can all get back to a normal life of business. These are complex times. The icebreakers have seen many ups and downs, 
and we will recover from this down and realize that the record levels of trade between our two nations, that really reflects the genuine underlying basis for the co cooperation of our two nations, together with both being permanent members of the Security Council of the United Nations. In closing, let me ask that we all thank the speakers and organizers. Please join me in applause. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for your commitment of China and UK relationship. And thank you for bringing us or reuniting us together through the icebreaker Chinese New Year celebration for 45 years. And you are absolutely our role model guiding us to move forward. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the second half of today's session, the cultural performance. 女士们、先生们，接下来我们就进入到今天庆典活动的下半场。我们精心安排了四项极富中国文化内涵的节目，希望您能喜欢。Traditional Chinese New Year activities have become one of the best ways for the world to explore Chinese culture and to understand China. And actually, here in London, we are totally immersed in the Chinese New Year atmosphere, from museums to local communities, from department stores to primary schools, Chinese elements are everywhere in London. But more importantly, a Chinese New Year is never completed without loads of Chinese yummy cuisines. So speaking of Chinese cuisines, and we have a special guest today, Chef Jason Lee. He specializes in all kinds of Chinese dishes, but today he will demonstrate us four specially curated dishes associated with tiger and good luck. Let's have a look. I'm Jason Lee. I'm the Chinese foodie in London. And I'm Thelma from the Bank of China. Happy Chinese New Year! Gonghei Today, we are here to talk about the Chinese food to do with the tiger. Brilliant! Unfortunately, I can't think of anything British uh, that associates with the tiger. Apart from my favourite, of course, tiger bread. <laughs> So Jason, what delicious Chinese tiger-inspired food do you have for us today? Before to start, let me ask you one first question. Where in China you can find live tiger in the wild? Um, I've heard of Dongbeihu, yeah. the Siberian tiger in northeast China. Not bad at all. But in Northeast China, there's one famous local dish called tiger salad. Mm, tiger salad? But tigers are not vegetarians. No, no, no. It's not for tigers. It's for human beings. But tigers are protected. I don't think anyone can put a tiger in a salad. Let me show you this famous tiger salad. Have you found any tiger inside? No. Actually, it's a pure vegetarian salad. And in Chinese and local words we call Lao Ku Tai. It's the same and accent or pronunciation as Lao Hu Tai. So Lao Hu it means tiger. Then Sala. It's easy to memorize, but there's no tiger at all. And delicious and tastes and healthy. Mmm, I think it will go well with my tiger bread. So go and try first. Okay. So this salad is made up from Chinese celery, English celery, radish and pepper and the seasoning and on top we've got sesame oil and ginger, spring onion and plus coriander. Mmm, it's really nice. What's next? <laughs> oh, my next dish is real tiger dish. We call tiger pepper. Look at the texture, look at the skin. You're so creative. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. It's very popular, this dish, in southern China. The skin looks just like the tiger's fur. First, uh, we pan fry both sides. Then, we cook with vinegar, soy sauce, 
and pinch some uh, white sugar. So the taste, a tiny bit traditional way, sweeter and sour. Oh, it looks delicious. Can I try some of my tiger bread? Yes. Mmm. That tastes really good. Mm, what's next? <laughs> We had enough vegetarian dish already. It's time to have some protein. Allow me to offer you this, my favorite dish, which is tiger eggs. Eggs? Scrambled flying tiger? My tiger egg is different. We boil the egg first, mm -hmm. then remove the shell and dry it, and pan fry with oil, and to golden brown, take out. We add some pork belly, light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, Chinese Shaoxing wine, some sugar, star anise, cook about for 25 minutes. Then all the season taste umami go to the egg. Mm. How's the taste? It's amazing. It's delicious. So Jason, can you cook anything else Tiger inspired? Have a seat. This is the tiger prawn. I promise I won't have it with my bread. The <laughs> recipe for you. I think you had enough bread for the next 12 years and you 2034. <laughs> I know you can't have this dish with my tiger bread, so I know we need a little bit of rice. Yes. I'm the rice person. I suggest you have a more rice with the tiger prawn. Delicious. Let's try get some rice. Allow me to serve you the prawn. So Chinese way, normally we don't use finger to eat prawn. We only use the chopstick, but today we make the exemption <laughs> and to do with fork and knife, but we never making dirty on the finger. So there's a trick. So I'm sure you this. Then dip in some sauce. Voila, please. Thank you. Mm. That's delicious. Jason, I know rice can symbolize silver, good fortune in the Chinese New Year. True, true, true. But in addition, though, if you have one more, the tiger eggs and the symbol to the goat, let me allow me to serve you. Okay. Tiger eggs, which resembles gold. So, silver and, and gold, gold to, to everyone, everyone in, in the year, year of, of tiger. Go ahead, Ba Chai. Happy Chinese New Year. Wow, thank you, Jason. Your dish makes me super homesick. I love tiger salad, Lao Hu Cai. I eat tiger salad because I come from Dongbei. Dongbei is my home, but also the home of Dongbei tiger. Uh, what a combination of the elegance and techniques of Western ballet with the Chinese history and aesthetics. Although there might be very few of us have been to Dunhuang, but I bet almost all of the participants today have visited Beijing and probably more than once. As we all know, Beijing will hold the 2022 Winter Olympics opening on next Friday on the 4th of February. So now we will enjoy two songs related to the Winter Olympics. And the first song will be presented by students from Milbong Primary School in Northern Ireland. And afterwards, we'll enjoy a musical assembler of the theme song of the Beijing Winter Olympics performed by Chinese athletes and Olympic champions. You are the miracle. Enjoy. <laughs> 